立法會主席。The President of the Legislative Council。Question. Questions. First question, the Honourable Albert Ho. President, before I raise my question, I'd like to declare interest. As a lawyer and also my law firm, we deal with the torture claims and also uh, JR cases relating to torture claims. Mr. President, the United Nations Convention Against Torture and Other Cruel, Inhuman or Degrading Treatment or Punishment, the Convention, has applied to Hong Kong since 1992. On the 13th of this month, when the Chief Executive attended a press conference after delivering this year's policy address, a reporter asked whether Hong Kong could consider withdrawing from the Convention. In response, the Chief Executive said that if needed, we could do so. In this connection, will the government inform this Council, one, whether it has assessed if it can achieve the outcome of the Convention ceasing to apply to Hong Kong, if it has of the details, if not the reasons for that, two, whether it has assessed the resultant impact on Hong Kong's international image on protection of human rights in the event that the Convention ceases to apply to Hong Kong, if it has of the details, if not the reasons for that. And three, as China is a state party to the Convention, 
and matters about the convention ceasing to apply to Hong Kong should be dealt with by the central authorities. Whether it has raised the relevant proposal with the central authorities, if it has the response of the central authorities, if not the reasons for that. The Secretary for Security. President. My consolidated reply to the various parts of the Honourable Albert Ho's question is as follows. Foreigners who smuggled them themselves into Hong Kong, who overstayed the limit of stay allowed, or who were refused entry by the Immigration Department upon, upon arrival in Hong Kong, will be removed from Hong Kong in accordance with the Immigration Ordinance. To safeguard immigration control and for public interest, they should be removed as soon as practicable. However, Article 3, Bracket 1 of the United Nations Convention Against Torture, or CAT, which applies to Hong Kong since 1992, stipulates that no state party shall expel, return, or extradite a person to another state where there are substantial grounds for believing that he would be in danger or being subjected to torture. In June 2004, the Court of Final Appeal, CFA, ruled in Prabhaka that to a foreigner who has made a torture claim, his life and limb are in jeopardy, and his fundamental human right not to be subjected to torture is involved. Accordingly, the government must determine his torture claim independently in a way that meets the high standards of fairness. In accordance with the CFA's ruling, the Immigration Department put in place an administrative mechanism to screen torture claims. In December 2008, the Court of First Instance, or CFI, ruled in FB that the government must allow claimants to have access to legal assistance. If claimants are unable to afford to do so, the government must provide legal assistance to claimants out of public funds. At the same time, the CFI ruled on various aspects of the procedures for handling torture claims to make them compliance with the high standards of fairness required in Prabhaka. To implement the above judgment, the government enhanced the screening mechanism by administrative means. At the same time, the government started working on a legislative exercise to underpin the procedural framework for screening torture claims by statutory provisions. In July 2012, the Legislative Council passed the Immigration Amendment Ordinance 2012 and it came into operation in December 2012. Since then, the Immigration Department screens torture claims on the basis of the amended Immigration Ordinance. However, in December 2012, the CFA made another ruler, ruling in Yubamaka that apart from torture, pursuant to Article 3 of the Hong Kong Bill of Rights or Hong Kong BOR, if a foreigner subject to removal has a real risk of being subjected to cruel, inhuman or degrading treatment or punishment, in short CIDTP, after being removed, then the government cannot remove that person either. Three months later, in March 2013, the CFA ruled in C that according to the Immigration Department's established practice based on humanitarian consideration, the government is also obliged to independently assess whether a foreigner has a risk of being subjected to persecution in his country of origin before removing him. In other words, apart from torture claims, if a foreigner who faces removal claims that he may be subjected to CIDTP or persecution in his country of origin, the government must screen his claim under procedures that meet the high standards of fairness or else it would be a violation of the CFA judgments. To implement the two CFA judgments and to prevent a claimant from raising one claim after another to resist removal pursuant to CAT, the Hong Kong BOR, the Immigration Ordinance and the two CFA judgments, the government decided to commence the Unified Screening Mechanism or USM in March 2014 to screen claims in one go. In short, the SAR government implements USM as required under CAT, Hong Kong BOR, the Immigration Ordinance and the CFA judgments. Since commencement of USM, the number of claimants increased significantly by 330% to an average of 440 per month. 
as at the end of 2015, the number of claimants pending screening reached almost 11,000. The significant increase in claims and the display of behavior abusing screening procedures have caused public concern over the social and public order issues brought about by the prolonged presence of a large and growing number of claimants in Hong Kong. Our top priority is to adopt appropriate measures under the prevailing legal requirements to intercept illegal immigrants at source and to expedite the screening process to remove claimants with unsubstantiated claims to the country of origin as soon as possible. We'll launch a comprehensive review of the strategy of handling non refoulement claims in the following four dimensions. A, pre-arrival control. To consider introducing pre-arrival registration to deter the arrival of economic migrants, to update the law to strengthen penalties against human smuggling and to step up enforcement against smuggling syndicates and to review visa-free policies as required. B. Screening procedures. To provide statutory underpinning to USM procedures. To tighten the overall time frame for screening claims prohibit delaying tactics and screen out manifestly unfounded claims early to review the provision of publicly funded legal assistance to enhance the operation of the TCAB and to enhance the Immigration Department's capability to collect countries of origin information. C. Detention. To consider strengthening the Immigration Department's legal power to, declaim, to detain claimants and to identify and refurbish suitable facilities for expanding detention capacity if necessary. And four, removal and enforcement to strengthen liaison with local consulates general to expedite the removal process, to step up enforcement against criminal activities such as unlawful employment and to enhance public publicity in Hong Kong and overseas. The review has just begun and we'll brief the panel on security on the details soon. During the review, the government will actively consider all feasible options and seriously assess legal issues arising from all proposals having regard to the basic law, the Hong Kong BOR, past CFA judgments and the latest overseas jurisprudence and case law. We'll also assess whether the proposals are feasible and whether they can effectively tackle our exacerbating problems of illegal immigration and overstaying. We'll comprehensively review our strategy from all angles of the wide range of complex issues involved. In principle, we'll maintain an open mind to any proposal during the review. That said, having regard to the requirement laid down in law in relation to the screening of non reformment claims, we have no plans to assess the question of cessation of application of CAT at present. Thank you, President. Mr. Albert Ho. President, as the Secretary said in the main reply, it can be seen that the government will agree that Hong Kong as a civilized place that respects human rights, we should, by obligation, implement the convention. Now, there are many problems, including abuse and delays. The system should be reviewed. But while you do so, the Secretary has also agreed that we must comply with the convention and also the CFA judgments, that we should keep to the principles that are expected of us. Secretary, if that is the stance of the SARG, do you agree that the CE caused misunderstanding in what he said? He said if needed, we could do so. There has been a lot of reaction from society and speculation, and also there is an unsettlement caused. So, Secretary, uh, can you say that there is no question of withdrawing from the convention? The review is just to comprehensively improve the system. Is that uh, the CE should withdraw his remark? Secretary, Mr. Ho, I spent over seven minutes to give an account of how the SALG deals with these problems. I mentioned many times that we need to act according to law. Uh, namely the convention, the CFA judgments, in order to tackle this very complex issue. I also said that, uh, as Mr. Ho was saying, I believe society will also agree that our top priority is to review the system. 
while complying with legal requirements, would like to expedite the handling of these issues so that the challenges we face can be effectively、uh, faced up to. In the process, we have no plans to consider the question of cessation of application of the CAT. I think what I said in the main reply goes to show that、uh, there is a clear answer to this question. Thank you, Mr. Gary Fan, President. Earlier on, the CE said that if necessary, we could withdraw from the convention. In in fact, he said something else. He said we wouldn't want any countries to exploit our relatively open immigration. Um, policies. Now, if、uh, this is also immigration policy, why is it that、uh, you are not reviewing the permit、uh, system for mainland arrivals? But then the CE has made such radical remarks about the CAT. I like to ask the question. Actually, the committee on CAT proposed earlier that. Within the umbrella、um, movement, actually, the committee said that there should be independent investigation into the abuse of violence. Is the CE trying to revenge?、Uh, while he said that we should withdraw from the convention, President, I don't understand why Mr. Gary Fan can arrive at the conclusion that the CE is intent on a revenge, Mr.、Um, Fan mentioned the one-way permit system for mainland arrivals.、Um, the one-way permit system has been established for a long time. The basic law also stipulates for such an arrangement. The CE, as I understand him to be saying, was about visa-free entry for foreigners. That is something totally different from the one-way permit system. I hope members will not mix up the two. We are facing a problem that the entire public is concerned about. You can see from press reports, there has been a lot of coverage recently. When I contacted the public, I also heard views from many quarters. We really have to deal with this problem. Our aim is that while we comply with legal requirements, we do our job as we should. For those with unsubstantiated claims, we don't want the claimants to stay in Hong Kong on a protracted basis without being effectively dealt with. So there is no question of the issue raised by Mr. Gary Fan, Mr. Gary Chan, President, there are at present about eleven thousand claimants in Hong Kong. Mr. Secretary, I think you agree that some of those are bogus refugees. We understand that in order to stay longer in Hong Kong, the bogus volunteers will provide false information or misleading information to the. Authorities in Hong Kong. My question for the secretary is: Will you talk to the countries of origin of these bogus volunteers because they usually come from a few countries? Will you set up a standing、um, communication system in order to shorten the time required for seeking information from them so the bogus volunteers can be、uh, returned to their countries of origin as soon as possible, secretary? Thank you for the question. We will take a series of measures. First, during the screening process, there is a stage where we need to understand the situation in the countries of origin of claimants. We will make use of all feasible and legal channels to seek information about the situation in those countries because the information is helpful to our screening work. Secondly. Recently, there is a trend that some people will make false claims.、Uh, they can even get、uh, refugee endorsements from their countries, 
and we'll have to liaise with those governments in order to tackle this. We have a series of plans to do this. I can give you an example. Recently, we sent a team of officials to a country to discuss the issue with their relevant authorities there. We pointed out to them the severity of the problem. We also required them to also act according to their laws. And through the media in that country, we expressed our demands in detail. We also have plans to go to other countries from which uh, there are always people coming to Hong Kong to make refugee claims, and we are starting to do that. Thank you. Mr. Wong Kwok Heng. President, in the main reply, the Secretary said that we should tighten the overall time frame for screening claims, prohibit delaying tactics, and screen out manifestly unfounded claims early. Secretary, can you give more details? Can you explain what feasible measures are being adopted by the authorities because the public are concerned that these claimants have abused the uh, system in Hong Kong. There are over 10,000 of them in Hong Kong. Secretary, President, please allow me to give a direct reply to Mr. Wong. But before that, I understand time is tight, but please uh, let me give certain information. We are facing certain problems whereby some claimants seek to use delaying tactics and the more common examples are that they need more time to fill out the form. We ask them to fill out a form um, in every case. This is not just our concern, and I can give you an example. The CIF Judge, Justice uh, Chen Guang Yu in May 2013 uh, said in a case that the immigration department provides a deadline of 28 days, and in normal circumstances, it should be enough for the claimants to fill out the form. If the claim is particularly com complicated, the lawyer on duty should state the actual reasons so the immigration department will understand the complicated nature of the case. The lawyer cannot just um, roughly say that he needs more time to discuss with the claimants. Right now, claimants are using different excuses to say they need more time. This is the first point, and we need to deal with that. And I can give you an example in other countries. The time given to the claimants is such that they must provide the information right there, or they are given just about 10 days. But in Hong Kong, we give 28 days, and we have discussed with the lawyers on duty, and now we give 49 days. But still claimants still say the time is insufficient. So this is a timing issue. Secondly, after arranging for an interview, say in last year, one-third of the interviews could not be held on schedule. And 70 percent of that one-third was that um, there was no show because the claimant was incapacitated or there was just no show. And so-called incapacity was not substantiated by any doctor's certification. We need to work on this front, and as long as we comply with legal requirements, we have to tighten the arrangements. We have done a lot of preparation, and we are prepared to revive the issue at the panel on security, to let you know our measures, and to listen to members' views. We have to effectively deal with the claims, and we need all stakeholders to work together to find a more effective way to do this. Mr. Leung Chi Chang, President, thank you. When the secretary asked oral supplementaries, he said that there was a, an upsurge of claimants and they 
are abusing the administrative arrangements. And that is why many refugees are stranded in Hong Kong. Many Hong Kong people are worried about law and order, and maybe these people may work as illegal workers in Hong Kong. The DAB would like to say this. If they are applying under legal procedures, can the administration adopt a refugee camp policy so these people are kept in a certain area so they will not have any law and order impact on Hong Kong and the secretary said sometimes you cannot locate the people if you put them in a refugee camp then you can locate them without a problem why don't you adopt this well established policy that worked in the past secretary if we were to operate a closed camp we need legal author uh, authorization. The immigration department can detain people who illegally come into Hong Kong or who are refused entry into Hong Kong. But the court has said in its judgment that detention can only facilitate one purpose and that the immigration department can complete the screening procedure within reasonable time. But as you know, the non reformment claims are very time consuming and uh, as I s detailed and according to present law, we need to give them a paper of recognizance or to put them on bail so the claimants are not detained. We need to tackle the problem we face but we must also consider legal applications and if we are to amend the law, what kinds of powers we would like to get. And that is why in the main reply I talked about detention as well. So it is not as simple as adopting a policy and then we'll be able to tackle the problem. But in any case, this is a direction for our um, discussion. We have almost used 24 minutes on this question. Yeah. Mr. Liu. Mr. President, um, on the 6th of this month, Global Times, a state-run newspaper of the main name, published an editorial entitled Hype and Distortion of Hong Kong Booksellers Cooperation with Investigation. When referring to the way by which a shareholder of Causeway Bay Books who was reported missing last month, entered the mainland. The editorial pointed out that powerful agencies across the world generally have their own ways to circumvent the law and make the person under investigation to work with them so that they can proceed with their work without crossing the bottom line of the system. End quote. Uh, there are comments that such statement aroused concerns that some mainland law enforcement officers had caused the missing person to enter the mainland by using in Hong Kong ways which circumvented the law and that such an act is a blatant breach of one country, two systems principle. In this connection, will the government inform this council, one, whether it knows in the first five years if any powerful agencies of the mainland caused any Hong Kong people to enter the mainland by using in Hong Kong ways of arrest, transport in custody or other ways which circumvented the law if there were such incidents of the details to whether it received requests for assistance from any powerful agencies or other agencies of the mainland in the past five years to facilitate they are causing any Hong Kong people to enter the mainland by using in Hong Kong ways of arrest, transport in custody or other ways which circumvented the law. If there were such incidents of the details and the government's responses to such requests and three, whether it has made inquiries with the central authorities to see if the powerful agencies of other agencies of the mainland know whether any Hong Kong people entered the mainland in the past five years by using ways which circumvented the law, if it has made such inquiries of the replies received. The Secretary for Security. Mr. President, 
the Hong Kong SAR government does not use the term powerful agencies. I also do not understand what powerful agencies, as mentioned by a media organization, refer to. The HKSAIG attaches great importance to the cases of missing persons associated with a bookstore in Causeway Bay and fully understands the concerns of the community. My consolidated reply to Mr. Ellen Leung's question is as follows. With regard to the missing person cases, the police have already commenced pro proactive and comprehensive investigation. During the course of the investigation, the police have been maintaining contact with the families of the four missing Hong Kong residents. The police have informed the families of the investigation progress and answered their queries. At the same time, the police have set up a 24-hour hotline, 67644385, and appealed to the public to provide information related to the case, or cases rather. In addition, the police have been seeking assistance from relevant mainland police cooperation units via the police cooperation mechanism. On the 18th of January, the police received a reply letter concerning one of the missing persons, Mr. Li Po, from the Interpol Guangdong Liaison Office of the Guangdong Provincial Public Security Department, which states that Mr. Li Po is in the mainland. The police have written to the Interpol Guangdong Liaison Office of the Guangdong Provincial Public Security Department on the same day, requesting to meet with Mr. Li Po and to further understand the situation. After, afterwards, the police were informed by the wife of Mr. Li Po on the 23rd of January, and she said she, she had met with Mr. Li Po at a guest house in the mainland on the same day. According to Mrs. Li, Mr. Li Po was healthy and in good spirits, and he was assisting in an investigation in the capacity of a witness. After the meeting, Mr. Li Po asked her to pass on a letter addressed to the Hong Kong police. The letters content was similar to previous letters penned by Mr. Li Po. Mrs. Li did not disclose any further details regarding the location of the meeting and the nature of the investigation Mr. Li Po was involved in. The Hong Kong police are now um, following up the case. In order to obtain further details of the circumstances, the Hong Kong police have issued another request on the 23rd of January to the Guangdong Provincial Public Security Department to assist in arranging a meeting with Mr. Li Po and the Hong Kong police. Since Hong Kong's return to China, the HKSLG has all along been dealing with matters relating to HKSAR strictly in accordance with principle one country, two systems, and basic law. The basic law only authorizes law enforcement agencies of Hong Kong to enforce laws in Hong Kong. Law enforcement agencies outside Hong Kong, i.e. law enforcement agencies of mainland or overseas, do not have the authority to enforce laws in Hong Kong. If law enforcement officers of non-Hong Kong jurisdictions take law enforcement action in Hong Kong, they will contravene Hong Kong law and is unacceptable. Other than properly permitted by the law, we shall not tolerate any unauthorized law enforcement action by anyone or any organization. As for any suspected case of infringement, we will conduct full and thorough investigation. I stress that the HKSARG acts according to the law and would not allow or assist non-Hong Kong law enforcement officers to take law enforcement actions in Hong Kong. In addition, Article 28 of Basic Law states that the freedom of the person of Hong Kong residents shall be inviolable. No Hong Kong resident shall be subjected to arbitrary or unlawful arrest, detention or imprisonment. Arbitrary, arbitrary or unlawful search of the body of any resident or deprivation or restriction of freedom of the person shall be prohibited. The HKSARG will, as always, continue to resolutely safeguard the rights and freedoms of Hong Kong residents in accordance with the law. Mr. President, Hong Kong residents enjoy ample freedom of press and of expression. Commentary is all along a channel for the media to express opinions, and such opinions represent certain points of view. The police investigation aims at finding out the truth, and the conclusion must be based on evidence and facts. In respect of some views that mainland law enforcement officers have taken such actions as arrests or sent under guarded escort, uh, etc. in Hong Kong to bring someone to the mainland, so far there is no substantive evidence to prove such 
um, to be true, and it is only speculation at the moment. The police have all along been acting, acting strictly in accordance with laws and regulations. The police would not give assistance to and tolerate illegal acts. In respect of the missing person case of Mr. Lipo, the police have already written to the Interpol Guangdong Liaison Office of the Guangdong Provincial Public Security Department to seek to meet with Mr. Li Po so as to further understand the situation. Before and after Hong Kong's return to China, Hong Kong and the mainland police authorities have all along been engaging in cooperation similar to that of international police cooperation established by the Interpol. To ensure consistency in implementation, police authorities of both sides conduct regular high-level meetings to regulate the basis and mode of cooperation. When cooperation is undertaken, both sides have to strictly comply uh, with the provisions of relevant laws and respect jurisdictions of the other side. The police officers of one side may visit the territory of the other side for investigation purposes. However, any law enforcement action must only be taken by the local law enforcement agencies in accordance with the local law. Under no circumstances can police officers of either side take enforcement action in the territory of the other jurisdiction. During the course of liaison between the Hong, uh, between Hong Kong police and mainland law enforcement agencies under the cooperation mechanism of a case, if a, one party requires the assistance of the other side to conduct investigation, the requested party may gather information relevant to the case through legal means and provide such information to the requesting party. When the requesting party makes requests for assistance, it must give prior notification to the requested party and explain clearly the nature of the case and the scope of assistance sought for the investigation. It will then be for the law enforcement officers of the requested party to undertake the investigation in accordance with the law. In the past five years, police authorities of two places have made in total about 5,500 requests for assistance through the police cooperation mechanism. The me mechanism has been operating smoothly and effectively. In the past, the police have obtained useful information uh, to the investigation and even solving cases. Um, such as cases which are of public concern, such as serious wounding cases, drug cases, and cases of robbery with firearms, etc. Uh, Mr. Lin Liu, Mr. President, whether the HKSLG uh, does use the term powerful agencies, I hope the Secretary understands that the people of Hong Kong have a legitimate expectation, and that is, within the HKSIR, um, they will not just disappear without any reason. I know that the Secretary understands the question. Anyways, even if the Global Times uh, he doesn't accept Global Times as a state-run newspaper. Uh, at least he admitted that on the 18th of January, the police received a reply letter from the Interpol Guangdong Liaison Office of the Guangdong PSD. That means a public authority in the mainland was involved. Otherwise, there wouldn't be a reply from the Public Security Department replying to the inquiry of the SARG. I want to ask the Secretary. Mr. Li Po, at least you have to accept that he was brought uh, by abnormal means um, into the mainland, whether he was bundled up, whether it was by a speedboat or by a uh, so-called saloon boat, a hair saloon boat. Um, or whether it is smuggling. Um, whether um, Mr. Lee Post's case is within the cooperation mechanism. I want to ask the um, Secretary, uh, does Mr. C. Y. Leung think that it is the time for him to intervene and deal with this um, issue politically, just like the um, former CE Donald Zhang dealt with the case of Mr. Ching Chang. He uh, should not uh, hide behind this so called uh, notification mechanism. As a secretary, um, Mr. Leung, the um, commissioner, in his um, press conference 
um, um, law and order situation last year, answered the question by the media, and he uh, spoken. He, he uh, has uh, spoken on this. But I uh, let me reiterate his point with regard uh, to the um, liaison with the mainland uh, counterparts. The police inquire through the cooperative mechanism. There is information indicating that Mr. Li Po is in the mainland, mainland, and therefore we work through this cooperation mechanism. And when I talk to other uh, LegCo members, I have already uh, mentioned uh, the cooperation mechanism, and I hope um, I have already expressed uh, my view very clearly. As for the CE, when the CE became aware of the incident, he quickly. Uh, responded um, to the media. He explained it to the public. He expressed his um, high level of concern towards the case, and through uh, various means and through various levels, he tried to understand uh, the uh, progress of the incident. And he also expressed um, the concern uh, towards the case on behalf of the community at large. And we have re uh, we have obtained um, some reply. What we hope most is that we would like to meet with Mr. Li Po. Um, we can talk to him face to face and ask him um, about the details of the case. Now, um, Mrs. Li, uh, wife of Mr. Li, met uh, with Mr. Li uh, in a guest house last Saturday, and she also um, brought a letter. Uh, to the Hong Kong police, um, the letter was written by Mr. Li Po. Uh, we want to clarify the uh, details of the case, and we need to meet with him. This is a very important step, and we hope that uh, there can be some progress with regard to this request to meet. Uh, he has not answered my question. My question is whether C. Y. Leung will um, do something similar uh, to that of Mr. Donald Chang, and that is raise uh, this case with the uh, president or the uh, premier. The secretary, uh, the S. A. L. G. will adopt all uh, practicable and effective means to deal with the case. Mr. Gary Fan. Now, uh, the deputy director of the uh, Guangdong uh, Provincial Public Security Department in answering a question by Hong Kong media said that he didn't understand whether Li Po um, entered into the mainland illegally. And then uh, Governor uh, of Guangdong, Zhu, uh, Mr. Zhu, uh, said that uh, the, the media should uh, uh, ask the que put the question to the relevant authorities. Uh, he indirectly admitted that it was done uh, by mainland authorities. Now they used the state uh, newspaper, uh, state-run newspaper, to call the, those authorities uh, powerful agencies. Now, with regard to Mr. Li Po, the administration said that it was liaising with the Guangdong Public Security Department. Did you ask them uh, who? Uh, uh, the the uh, powerful who uh, which uh, department which powerful agency um, it is uh, which is dealing with Mr. Li Po's case? Can you, uh, what um, who are the public security officers? Which public security department? If you don't know who they are, then how can you protect the uh, freedom of persons or safety of persons? Uh, in Hong Kong, you say that you uh, investigate each and every missing person case. How can you do that if you don't know which department is responsible? Uh, the, pre uh, the secretary, uh, Mr. President, I've already said um, that I've already commented on the so-called powerful agencies. Now you are just referring to a commentary by a newspaper. I believe you all agree that a commentary in a newspaper is just a commentary. If there is an official statement, that is another thing. We cannot just base on a certain assumption. We cannot just rely on a certain platform and then base on it and continue to speculate and then even come to a conclusion. The officials of Guangdong province uh, gave a reply to uh, questions made by the media. 
I am not the official. I am not present. I will not try to interpret uh, the reply. In dealing with these cases, we must base on evidence. We have to uh, look for the facts. So you are not able to answer the question. Please repeat which part of questions not being answered. Please uh, ask your question succinctly. What is exactly your is your question? Now you are not able to specifically say which powerful agency it is. Will you be able to answer that, the secretary? I've already said uh, at the start of my reply, very clearly. I think my reply is very clear. Uh, Mr. Dennis Kwok. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, Mr. Secretary, concerning similar cases like that of Lee Po uh, in um, September 2013, uh, Mr. Poon and Mrs. Poon were abducted and put on a speedboat and then sent uh, to Guangzhou, and they were um, then uh, sent. Uh, uh, they, they were then tortured and then uh, sent to jail for 17 years. Under what provision of the uh, Chinese criminal law uh, uh, is Mr. Li uh, put in custody or arrested? Uh, under what uh, circumstances is he uh, put in custody? Have you inquired the mainland authorities about that? Now you seek uh, you, you you are request to meet with Mr. Li Po. When will that be entertained? Why Mrs. Li is able to? I meet Mr. Li Po, whereas you have not been allowed to meet with Mr. Li Po after you have asked for so many days. Is the mechanism really respected? The Secretary. Uh, the member has asked several questions with regard to the uh, case of Mr. Poon in 2013. In responding to an inquiry made by the media, the police has already provided all the details that can be disclosed. This is a case of illegal abduction. The police investigated the case and obtained the support of the department's concern, and uh, his wife uh, was brought to Hong Kong. As for Mr. Poon himself, he was suspected to have breached mainland laws, and therefore the mainland uh, tr um, tried him, and the case was brought before the court. The specifics um, uh, were very clear, and I did, uh, do not uh, waste the time on that. But the police is so investigating this case. Three persons uh, were arrested, but because of lack of evidence, the police was not able to prosecute the suspects. As for Mr. Kwok's uh, other questions, we did discuss the matter at the meeting of the security panel yesterday. We exchanged our views with regard to the notification mechanism. The um, relevant authorities in the mainland um, give a notification if they take any criminal uh, enforcement action. They um, notify our um, departments. The uh, crucial issue is whether Mr. Lee uh, uh, was being treated uh, or is being treated uh, according to the five conditions. And if uh, that is, then it falls within the notification mechanism, and there is a need to make the notification. But if it is outside those five uh, circumstances, then uh, this is not within the notification mechanism. And there, can, there is the cooperation mechanism, and that's why through this cooperation mechanism, we uh, wrote to our counterparts in the mainland, and we obtained a reply. We now know that Mr. Li Po is in the mainland. In order to understand the um, detail of the case, we asked to meet with Mr. Li Po. The, this is reasonable by the Hong Kong police. Before we clarify the details 
uh, if we uh, make certain uh, speculations and even come to a certain conclusion that the notification mechanism is a failure, I beg to differ. I have already given data to show that over a long period of time, we received more than 12,000 notifications involving thousands of Hong Kong residents, 9,400, about 9,400. How can we say that this mechanism has failed? We're talking about the overall mechanism. Mr. Kwok, now he has not answered my question. When will you be able to meet Mr. Lee Po? We, of course, want to see him as early as possible, but this is not in our hands. Thank you. Mr. Lam Tai Fai. Uh, Mr. President, Hong Kong people hope that after um, reunification, uh, Hong Kong uh, should uh, Hong Kong uh, should, will develop uh, under one country, two systems, and Hong Kong people uh, go, uh, ruling Hong Kong. And the government also hopes that Hong Kong people supports the CE in uh, governing Hong Kong according to the law. Now, concerning the Causeway Bay um, book. Uh, incidents, um, heavens are uh, looking down on us. Whether the, the um, well, Chinese authorities have complied with the law, whether uh, what has been done by uh, those people involved, and also what the SALG have uh, safeguarded the uh, freedoms of the people of Hong Kong. Uh, at present, uh, we are not able to uh, legislate under Article 23 of the Basic Law. If some country um, jeopardizes the security of our country, the SALG being um, an element of our country, will the SALG for the security of the country, for the security, uh, for the safety of our people, uh, make notification to the mainland authorities and assist uh, the uh, our country uh, in bringing the person? who um, jeopardize the security of our country to go back to the mainland or assist him in uh, using his uh, means to go back to the mainland. If the SALG does this, it's in breach of one country, two systems. If the SALG doesn't do this, uh, then is it um, um, justified? Uh, is it um, answerable uh, to the... Um now, please stop your question. Uh, the secretary, please uh, try to answer your the, the question uh, briefly and precisely. Now we strictly adhere to the basic law. The mainland authorities, or rather mainland laws, apart from those that are in um, Annex 3 of the basic law, according to Article 18, uh, other national laws shall not apply to Hong Kong. Uh, we follow the basic law. We follow the law of Hong Kong. As for law enforcement agencies in Hong Kong, which take uh, if they take any law enforcement action, they have to comply with the law in Hong Kong strictly, and in doing so, we strictly uh, support one country, two systems, and a high degree of autonomy. We have spent uh, nearly um, 25 minutes and 30 seconds. Only three members are able to ask supplementary questions, and nine are waiting in the line. But we are unable to continue. The third question. The Honourable Lee Chak Yan. Mr. President, regarding issues relating to the Chief Executive CE paying duty visits to report on his work to the Central People's Government CPG, will the Government inform this Council whether the authorities in composing CE's reports for reporting visits in future consider consulting the public on the outline and the main contents of such reports and making public such reports and relevant documents is visited? Viciously after the reporting visit, so as to manifest the constitutional responsibility that CE shall be accountable to the Hong Kong SAR and to enhance the transparency of policy implementation by the government, if so, of the details, if not the reasons for that. Two, whether the authorities during the previous reporting visits made by the incumbent CEO in his reports for such reporting visits proposed matters for which they intended to secure CPG support, if so, whether they can provide the relevant list and details if they cannot provide such information of the reasons for that, and three, whether this incumbent CE during his previous reporting visits received directives or instructions given by CBG in verbal written or other forms, if so, whether the authorities can provide the relevant list and details if they cannot provide such information of the reasons for that. 
Secretary for Constitutional Mainland Affairs. Mr. President, after consulting the Chief Executive's Office, our authorized reply to the Honorable Lee Chak Yan's um, question is as follows. Under the principle of one country, two systems, Hong Kong people administering Hong Kong in a high degree of autonomy on the provisions of the Basic Law, the Chief Executive has a unique and important constitutional role. Article 43 of the Basic Law provides that the CE of the Hong Kong SAR shall be the head of the Hong Kong SAR and shall represent the Hong Kong SAR and shall be accountable to the CPG and the Hong Kong SAR. Article 48 also provides that the CE shall lead the government of the Hong Kong SAR, be responsible for the implementation of the basic law and other laws which, in accordance with the basic law, apply in the Hong Kong SAR. Implement the directives issued by the CPG in respect of the relevant matters provided for in the basic law and conduct on behalf of the Hong government of the Hong Kong SAR external affairs and other affairs authorized by the central authorities. To fulfill the above constitutional requirements, all the CEs since the uh, Hong Kong SAR's return to the motherland report to state leaders on the latest developments and situation of the Hong Kong SAR. Since the assumption of office in July 2012, the incumbent CE has been making detailed, comprehensive, objective and truthful reports to state leaders on the situation of the Hong Kong SAR and the work of the Hong Kong SAR government. State leaders have fully affirmed and supported the work of the CE and the Hong Kong SAR government. The Chief Executive's Office announces the relevant dates arrangements and accompanying officials every time before the annual day duty visit of the CE. The CE also meets and informs the media of the developments of his visit during his stay in Beijing. Taking the recent duty visit as an example, the CE met the media before, during and after his duty visit. He briefly introduced the issues of his duty visit and the matters that he would seek support from the CPG such as how Hong Kong could complement the two important national strategies, namely the National 13th Five-Year Plan and the Belt and Road Initiative, the Shenzhen Hong Kong Stock Connect, and the progress of the Hong Kong Jihau Macau Bridge, etc. When the CE met the media, he also relayed the views of state leaders in response to his report. Pursuant to Article 64 of the Basic Law, the CE regularly presents its policy address to the Legislative Council, after which he responds to members' questions and listens to the views of the media and the public. In addition, the CE generally attends four question and answer sessions of the LegCo in each legislative session to exchange views on the work of the administration with the members. Bureaus and departments of the government of the Hong Kong SAR will also fully exchange views and listen to comments and suggestions on their respective policy areas with members of the electrical, district councils, statutory bodies and consultative committees. In conclusion, the CE and the government under his leadership are accountable to the SAR and the public for their policies through various approaches and channels. Thank you, President. Mr. Lee Chak Yan. President, the reply is uh, so ridiculous. I've been asking how the report was compiled, and second, what uh, he's striving for from the CPG, and third, uh, whether there are any CPG's directives and or instructions. He hasn't replied to me. There is no transparency at all. He said that the CE is, is accountable, the Hong Kong SAR. He's unwilling to reply to our questions. He, he doesn't want any transparency. He said that the report is detailed, comprehensive, objective, and truthful. I don't know what you mean by detailed, comprehensive, and objective. If you say that is detailed, comprehensive, ob and objective report, have you mentioned about appointing Arthur Lee as the um, chair of the Hong Kong Youth Council and there has been public out? cry? Have you mentioned that uh, people are very angry that um, there is cost overrun of the white elephant projects um, and that he's not delivering on his pledges to cancel the offsetting mechanism for MPF? So what report is he making? Maybe he's just bootlicking in his report and in his giving, um, he's covering up the flaws. Well, have the matters that I discussed been mentioned specifically in the report? Why don't you make it public your report to the public? Thank you. Secretary, in the CE's uh, meeting with the state leaders after the duty visits, 
will take the recent duty visit. Um, on the 23rd of December 2015, the um, CE immediately made an account of his um, visit to the media and also um, the matters discussed include, for example, how Hong Kong should um, participate in the national 30th five-year plan under the one country to print, uh, uh, two systems principle, how Hong Kong can participate in Belt and Road Initiative on the financial side uh, under the national 13th five-year plan, apart from acting as the offshore MMB hub. Uh, we want to be a um, uh, asset uh, management hub as well. So in the uh, press release issue that evening, the CEE has uh, given all the details on such matters and also and re in his report to the media, in his meeting with the media, he also mentioned the state leader's views on such issues as, for example, well, don't waste any more of our time. Mr. Lee Chuck Yang asked us specifically about three matters, whether those were mentioned in the CE's report to the CPG. Would you be answering um, specifically on these three matters? The CE reported um, Hong Kong situation to the CPG. He's, um, he will talk about various aspects of Hong Kong's situation, um, the economic development, livelihood issues will be covered, political issues will be covered. There will be an overall report to the state leaders. And if there are areas which need cooperation between the CPG and the SARG, um, those areas will also be covered. A point of order, President. Call for quorum. And perhaps I'll give him some time to think how he should better answer my question. He hasn't answered my question.
Secretary, in your reply to Mr. Li Chuck-Yan's supplementary question, do you have anything more to say? Well, perhaps I would um, say three more things. First, as I said, um, uh, in accordance with our understanding from the C's office, the matters discussed at the duty visit include um, the economic, social, and political situation of Hong Kong, the Hong SARG's work, and also matters that the SARG would seek support from the CPG. That's number one. Number two, in uh, December, after the duty visit in response to media questions, the CE said, or rather the media asked uh, specific questions um, on matters whether on, on whether certain matters have been mentioned, the CE's uh, reply. Quote, let me quote this in our uh, in my annual duty visit to the state leaders. We um, asked um, certain things um, and talked about matters that would we would seek support from the CPG and for matters um, that um, need cooperation between the CPG and the SARG, those would be mentioned, end of quote. So these would, matters would be specifically mentioned. Third, as in my, in my main reply, uh, Mr. Lee is concerned about certain matters and I'm sure that the CPG would um, gather, uh, would understand the situation from various um, channels. And also uh, in the Q&A session at the Legislative Council and through the um, Bureau Directors' uh, presence here, um, the Legislative members have different channels to follow up on issues of concern to the members. Mr. Gary Fan, the Director of Hong Kong Macau's Affairs, Wang Guangya, in uh, December 2013, said that uh, the duty visit should be uh, regularized and there should be uh, certain specifications on the uh, report um, of the CE. So has the CPG asked the CE um, and set out the matters to be discussed in the duty visit report? And in the CE's uh, duty visit, if he would like to raise certain issues um, would that would Article 22 of the Basic Law be uh, referred to? That is, the uh, CBG should not intervene into the Hong Kong SRL's um, affairs. Let me um, tackle the second part of his question first. All along, the um, SRG and CPG have been governing um, Hong Kong under the one country, two systems principle, Hong Kong ministering Hong Kong and a high degree of autonomy, and that covers the duty visits. And Mr. Fan talked about Mr. Wong's remarks on um, regularizing the um, report. That has to do with two uh, things. And we want to implement Article uh, 43 in the duty visit, and that is the chief executive should be accountable to the CPG. And also, um, in terms of sort of making it regular, and that means um, the date and the itinerary and so on. So we've uh, gathered experience from um, the duty visits in the past 15, 16 years. So we want to make it uh, more uh, regular and um, there should be certain procedures to be followed in the arrangement um, so that the efficiency of the visits uh, can be enhanced. So that has to do with the arrangement mainly of the duty visits. Uh, Mr. Dennis Kwok, um, the CE has been practicing selfishry, and we all know, all know about that. If we uh, depend on him to uh, disseminate information which uh, people can believe in, that that's um, impossible. So that's why Mr. Lee Chuck Yun raised uh, this request that we should be given an oversight of the report so that we know exactly what he is reporting on, whether the um, report is impartial. So his question is, why is it the case that the report cannot be made public? Are there any secrets in the report? Secretary, last year, on the 18th of March last year at the Council, some members have asked a similar question. Let me try to um, quote from the CS4A's reply at that time. Um, the same answer applies here. Under the basic law, 
to our understanding, the um, CE is accountable to the CBG and at the same time accountable to the um, HKSAR. So it's double accountability there. To our understanding, the, these are two accountability systems. So the arrangement differs in these two systems. As I said in my main reply, if the public or you have a views on our governance and our policies. There are so many channels that you can reflect those views, including um, that we would um, the question and answer sessions of the LegCo, and that will um, help really realize the accountability system. Different um, mechanisms will play different functions in this accountability system. So there are sort of a two double accountability um, mechanisms. Mr. Lang Kuo Hong. I've heard the secretary's reply, and then I understand now why there is a lack of quorum here. Because he is you see he is uh, uh, holding press briefings, and we hold the CE accountable with three uh, um, the media sessions. And the Mr. Wang Guang Ya asked you to try to regularize the duty visits. Well, it's been two years down the road. What are you talking about here? Well, it would be up to the uh, the President C to set the date for the duty visit. It would be not be up to you to set the date, right? I have a quite a simple question for you. You are talking about duty visits. There are many parts to it. Can you tell the council? The CE will be talking to various government departments in the CPG. Uh, what kind of instructions has he got from them? It doesn't mean that he must uh, um, um, execute these instructions. Do you have a written report on those? So that we can um, follow up duly with the CE. Mr. Huang Guangya said that the duty visits uh, should be made more regular. So did he tell you or specify exactly which areas he should report on and which government um, departments he should talk to and whether CE should relay the views expressed by the CPG? At the President Xi is asking the CE to promote harmony in this society. Well, don't uh, make your statement. Um, I've heard your questions clearly, uh, Secretary. President, I'm sure that um, you and the media know very well that um, it's been uh, over 10 years since the uh, reunification. Um, every year, the CEO will uh, have a duty visit at the end of the year, and he will meet, meet um, uh, the, with the President and the Premier regularly, uh, usually. And during the duty, the period of the duty visit, and based on what needs, the CE will meet with the relevant um, ministries and departments. In December last year, the, um, he meet with the NDRC to discuss the national 13 five-year plan, and also the Ministry of Culture to talk about creative industries. So in his me meeting with the media, the CE also said um, the same, that he has met with these uh, various ministries. And this practice um, or this arrangement will continue in the future. Well, please repeat what, um, wh wh which part of your question that the Secretary has not answered. Well, he would make the duty visit and he will tell us um, what kind of instructions has he got from the CPG? He should give a full account of what the directives, um, directives he has received. Um, he should be asked to identify the flaws in the governance. Secretary, any supplement? One further point. In every duty visit, as I mentioned, um, the CE will meet with the Premier and the President in the um, beginning. Several in the, in the several minutes in the beginning, the media will be allowed uh, to report on those. And after the duty visit, 
um, the CE would also repeat or relay what has been discussed, and he would also relay the state leaders' views uh, to the media. And also the CPG, through their own press releases, will also um, the set out the CPG's aspirations and expectations of the work of the CE in the future. So that those points were also mentioned in the central authorities' press releases as well. So these are uh, is uh, public information. Mr. Lang, I think he has answered your question. Mr. Lang, please take uh, your seat. Dr. Kwakaki, thank you, Mr. President. I noticed that after C. Y. Lang assumed office. Well, his popularity uh, rating is very low, and also the public has lost faith in the state leaders, including um, President Xi. And the secretary said that the uh, the uh, system and the mechanism has, has worked effectively. Now, um, in the latest duty visit, um, the CY's lungs uh, status has been degraded. He's been taking the side seat and he's been listening to instructions from the state leaders. So the kind of duty visit now he's uh, taking um, is not being trusted by Hong Kong people. And we've lost confidence in the, these um, CPG's policies towards Hong Kong. Why is it that these arrangements um, is being degraded this time? What was the reason for that? Do you think the CE should be open and sincere in his report on the duty visit um, so that there will not be a further deterioration between the uh, the in the relation between the CPG and the Hong Kong SARL. Secretary, Dr. Kwok Kaki mentioned about the seating protocol arrangement according to Article 43 of the Basic Law. As I said, the uh, CE should be the account uh, should be accountable to the CPG on behalf of the SAR. As to the uh, seating arrangements and other logistics arrangements, that would be. Um, actually, a matter for the uh, Hong Kong Macau Affairs Office of the State Council, and they said that um, this arrangement is better. It can better uh, realize the relationship between the CPG and the HKSARG, and also um, implementing the clause um, or the provision that the CE should be accountable to the CPG. So that's hence the. Um, seating arrangement. Well, their um, statement um, only reiterates what is provided in the basic law. So this is really to realize the constitutional arrangement um, as enshrined in the basic law. My question is clear. How come that there is a de degrading of the status and what um, ratification measures do you have that uh, Hong Kong will continue to be degraded by the um, CPG? I think uh, the secretary has already answered your question. It's just that you don't um, agree with what he said. Mr. Porter, the CE should be accountable to the SARG and also the CPG. Now, with regard to accountability to Hong Kong SARL, there is a policy address, a press releases, and so on. There, I mean, the transparency is high. But then for, for his accountability to the CPG, the transparency is not enough. Um, f even for the political, uh, con the constitutional reform, we we um, only see a summary of the report. Can we enhance the transparency? Well, well, taking the um, some examples of overseas jurisdictions, even for um, re confidential reports, it can be made. Um, public after, say, um, some years. So ca how can we enhance the transparency in terms of our accountability to the CPG? To my understanding, the CE uh, makes reports uh, in accordance with uh, the arrangement um, for archives and so on that has been, using in, been used in Hong Kong. We've spent over 25 minutes on this. Mr. Lam Tai Fai. Thank you, President. Earlier on, five shareholders and employees of Causeway Bay Books were reported missing one after another, which has aroused wide public concern. It has been reported that a wife of one of the missing persons received consecutively two calls, the displayed caller number being a Shenzhen phone number and a video footage 
from that missing person to her show of a safety. An associate of the bookstore received a handwritten fax from that missing person, disclosing that he had returned to the mainland using his own way to work with the authorities concerned in an investigation. Moreover, when commenting on the way through which that missing person entered the mainland, the editorial of a mainland newspaper pointed out that powerful agencies across the world generally have their own ways to circumvent the law and make a person under investigation work with them, so that they can proceed with their work without crossing the bottom line of the system. Also, a member of this council quoted a message from his friend saying that the five missing persons illegally entered mainland one after another to visit prostitutes and were arrested by public security authorities. Such remarks have sparked strong repercussions. The aforesaid cases have aroused concerns about whether the one country, two systems has been weakened. The way the Hong Kong SA, our government handles cases of Hong Kong residents reported missing, whether some persons have left Hong Kong by ways which circumvented the laws, whether mainland law enforcement officers have crossed the boundary to take law enforcement actions in Hong Kong, and whether the government has assisted them in conducting investigations in Hong Kong. In this connection, would the government inform this council one of the number of Hong Kong residents found after they had been reported missing, their conditions when they were found, that is, whether they were alive or dead, the number of those who have not yet been found, the number of Hong Kong residents intercepted by law enforcement departments when they were trying to leave the territory illegally, and whether it knows the number of persons who successfully left the territory illegally since the reunification. Two, whether it knows since the reunification if any government departments and officers of law enforcement departments of the mainland conducted investigations in Hong Kong into criminal offences, criminal crimes, cases of persons missing, etc., and whether the SAL government has provided assistance to them, if so, of the details of not the reasons for that, and three, whether the SAL government has sought since the reunification assistance from the mainland authorities to locate missing Hong Kong residents and the number of those who were found on the mainland. If so, of the details, if not, the reasons for that. I uh, notice that we have, uh, we need all members in the chamber to remain here so that we can have a quorum. So, uh, after this question, I will uh, suspend the meeting for half an hour. Thank you. President. The Hong Kong SL government attaches great importance to the cases of missing persons associated with the bookstore in Causeway Bay and fully understands the concerns of the community. With regard to the cases that the police are now conducting proactive and comprehensive investigation, my reply to the Dr. The Honorable Lam Tai Fai's question is as follows. First, the police attach great importance to every case of missing person and will spare no effort in investigation. Upon receiving a report of missing person, the police will dispatch officers to the last location where the alleged missing person was known to have been to, as well as places where the missing person usually goes in accordance with the information provided by the informant to conduct searching. The police will also look for clues from various sources, including closed circuit TV footage, etc., and contact people that the missing person knows so as to obtain more information about him. In addition, depending on the actual circumstances, the police will liaise with the Immigration Department, Correctional Services Department, and Hospital Authority, etc., to locate the missing person. If necessary, and with the consent of the family of the missing person, the police will also appeal to the public to provide information about the missing person through television program, police magazine, and police websites, as well as government press releases, etc. If Hong Kong resident is reported missing in other places, the police will seek assistance from the cooperation units of the relevant places. Amongst the missing person cases received by the police between the 1st of January 2011 and the 31st of December 2015, 24,543 cases were closed. 
These include cases in which the police have successfully found the missing persons, or the police could contact and inform, confirm the identity of the missing persons after the informants have notified the police that uh, they've been found, as well as cases in which the police have discovered objective and solid evidence after investigation, which proves that the missing persons are safe and the police could find no suspicion in such cases. Of the cases received in the same period, the police are still conducting investigation for 133 missing person cases. Part one of the question mentions Hong Kong residents leaving the territory illegally. The Immigration Department maintains effective immigration control at all control points. Passengers entering or leaving Hong Kong at sea, land or air control points shall produce a valid travel document. Eligible Hong Kong residents may present their valid Hong Kong identity cards for clearance. The Immigration Ordinance, CAP 115, empowers immigration officers to examine any person on his arrival or landing in or prior to his departure from Hong Kong or to require him to submit to further examination and or to furnish such information as may be required for this purpose. Any person who, without reasonable excuse, knowingly contravenes the requirements shall be guilty of an offence and liable on conviction to a fine of $120,000. The Immigration Department does not maintain relevant statistics of Hong Kong residents living in Hong Kong without going through immigration clearance. Past two and three of the question. The Hong Kong police have been maintaining a police cooperation mechanism with mainland police authorities. Under the mechanism, if one party requires the assistance of the other party to conduct an investigation, the requested party may gather information relevant to the case through legal means and provide such information to the requesting party. When the requesting party makes request for assistance, it must give prior notification to the requested party and explain clearly the nature of the case and the scope of the assistance sought for the investigation. It would then be for the law enforcement officers of the requested party to undertake the investigation in accordance with the work law. When conducting such cooperation, any law enforcement actions must only be taken by the local law enforcement agencies in accordance with the law. Under no circumstances can police officers of either side take enforcement actions in the territory of the other jurisdiction. The above cooperation mechanism has been operating effectively. Under the mechanism, the two sides could communicate with regard to various cases of matters, including criminal cases, commercial crimes, and missing persons, etc. Both sides have received assistance from the other side, as well as usual information, and some cases have even been solved. In the past five years, police authorities of the two cases have made in total about 5,500 requests for assistance through police cooperation mechanism. In addition, upon receiving requests for assistance from Hong Kong residents on the mainland and the case information, the mainland officers of the Hong Kong Yasao government as well as the assistance to Hong Kong residents units of the ID will provide appropriate assistance. Have we regard to the nature and circumstances of the case as well as requests of the assistance seekers? Upon receipt of a report of a person suspected missing in the mainland, the relevant department will liaise with his mainland counterparts depending on the actual circumstances and seek their assistance. The police and the ID do not maintain statistics on missing Hong Kong residents who were found in the mainland. In respect of the missing person cases mentioned in the question, the police have been seeking assistance from the relevant mainland police cooperation units via the police cooperation mechanism. On the 18th of January, the police received a reply letter concerning one of the missing persons, Mr. Li Po, from the Interpol Guangdong Liaison Office of the Guangdong Provincial Public Security Department, which states that Mr. Li is in the mainland. The police have written to the Interpol Guangdong Liaison Office of the Guangdong Provincial Public Security Department the same day, requesting to meet with Mr. Li Po and further understand the situation of the incident. Afterwards, the police were informed by the wife of Mr. Li Po on the 23rd of January 
that she had met with Mr. Lee Paul on the mainland on the same day, and according to Mrs. Lee, Mr. Lee Paul was healthy and in good spirits, and he was assisting in an investigation and capacity of a witness. After the meeting, Mrs. Lee, Mr. Lee asked her to pass a letter to the Hong Kong police. The letter's content was similar to a previous letter penned by Mr. Lee Paul, and Mrs. Lee did not disclose any further details regarding the location of the meeting and the nature of the investigation she was involved in. The Hong Kong police are now continuing to follow up on the case. In order to obtain further details of the circumstances of the case, our police have issued another request on the 23rd of January to the Guangdong Provincial Security Department to assist in arranging a meeting between Mr. Lee and the Hong Kong police. Separately, the ideas and the corners of wishes of the family and one of the missing persons, which is sought assistance from the department, provided practical assistance to the family. Thank you, President. Uh, this question uh, involved uh, the same uh, case of uh, question number two. I uh, did not allow the two to be uh, asked together because of uh, the nature of the Questions are different. So may I remind members, for ease, as already discussed in a previous question, please do not repeat that. Mr. Lam Tai Fine. President, have you noticed that uh, the secretary is irrelevant in his reply? He hasn't supplied the figures. I saw it um, under my question. So would you say that the reply is relevant? And how can I ask supplementary questions? Please advance your supplementary question. In relation to the reply provided by the secretary, well, uh, in um, when the C reported to uh, uh, President C, he said that uh, there would it, he would ensure that the implementation of one country to systems principle will uh, not be uh, changed. Let me tell the secretary that if uh, Mr. Lee's incident is not properly handled, that many people in Hong Kong will think that the implementation of one country to systems uh, has uh, departed from its original intention and is no longer the same. Because the reply is re irrelevant, I don't know how to follow up. If I follow up, I might be digressing. So I'd like to uh, follow up on Mr. Lin Leung's uh, supplementary question asked in Q2. I hope the secretary can answer my question because we all want to sort it out. And because we have not legislated Article 23 of the Basic Law, Hong Kong is part of uh, the country. If uh, the central authorities are aware that their Hong Kong residents have done something who have endangered the uh, security of the nation, will such persons be handed over to the central authorities? If yes, uh, does that mean that our government is blatantly violating the one country, two systems principle and uh, to ensure they will not uh, so they will not be an accomplice to um, the um, uh, damage of uh, one country to systems. As you said, uh, Mr. Lam, your question is not directly related to this question, and it was also asked in the previous question. But since you've asked it, I'll see if the Secretary has anything to add. Secretary. One country. Well, the one country, two systems principle, Hong Kong people in Hong Kong, and high degree of autonomy. Are all enshrined in the basic law. Every move of the SAL government has to be law abiding. I'm sure you understand that there is no agreement uh, for a removal of fugitives between Hong Kong and the mainland, and we are now still discussing such matters. So, as regards Mr. Lam's question, uh, whether we are going to hand over uh, fugitives to the mainland, well, uh, there is no basis for that. When we handle any matter, we must uh, uphold the principle of one country, two systems, because the uh, legal systems are different in the two places. Our law enforcement agencies will uphold this principle in our SAR, we will act according to our laws. Dr. Priscilla, Le, Mr. Lam, I really don't understand. He made a long speech, but can he tell us whether a Hong Kong resident who uh, is endangering national security be handed over to the mainland? This is so simple. 
Mr. Lam, your supplementary question together with your main question and reply has uh, taken 15 minutes and there are seven members waiting to answer, ask questions. I think I'm sure you can understand his reply even uh, in my level I can understand his reply. Dr. Priscilla Lau. Well, I have help request for assistance uh, from uh, cases from both uh, places. So uh, usually uh, the family of uh, the person would uh, openly come out and seek help. For Mr. Lee, he is not really formally detained. He is not on bail, a pending trial, and uh, he is not abducted. So it's very difficult for our Hong Kong police to establish a case. This is such a unique case. I think that has gone beyond the um, notification mechanism between the two places. So my question is, Secretary, now uh, this is a case um, that is not within uh, your established mechanism. So I'd like to know uh, what assistance can you offer to him? Uh, would you want to tell the public what you can do and would you want to expand the scope of this mutual notification mechanism? Secretary. Now, our focus is on this uh, mutual notification mechanism. In fact, uh, we also have a police cooperation mechanism, which I mentioned in my main reply. Uh, the term police cooperation mechanism might not have uh, attracted legislators' intention. Now, the notification uh, system cover two scenarios, a natural death and second, uh, criminal uh, matters, enforcement of criminal uh, matters. Mr. Dennis Cork had talked about this at length and I will not repeat. Now, if the cases fall within this scope, then both parties should within re reasonable um, uh, time notify the other party. For cases that is outside this mechanism, we also have a police cooperation mechanism which is much wider in scope. For any matter, if there is anything, we need the mainland to help. We can uh, put a request to the mainland. So the police have activated this political operation mechanism. We have lodged a request for assistance to seek information from the other party. We've received uh, replies. Of course, we further asked to be allowed to meet Mr. Lee. So is this uh, police cooperation mechanism working? I believe it is so far because we have received replies from the other side. Whether it is all we want, I think we have uh, to do it one step at a time. Well, this mechanism, I think, is effective. Secondly, do we have to do more? Of course, for all mechanisms. When we have regular meetings, we will discuss them. Anything that can make things smoother can be explored by the two parties. And we do attach significance to the implementation of the mechanism. We will, from time to time, remind our own officers of the existence of uh, this mechanism and, when necessary, how we can, through the mechanism, handle some issues. We have dealt her with many cases in the past in this way. For instance, uh, when there was a serious armed robbery case and even for kidnaps, uh, we used that mechanism to help in a serious assault uh, wounding case. We also used the mechanism. So we have to view that uh, this mechanism has worked all along. Mr. Wu Chiwai. Thank you, President. Well, uh, the Secretary mumbled a lot about that mechanism. Uh, in 2013, on the 
8th of September, Mr. Wang Hing was uh, abducted out of Hong Kong and handed to the authorities in Guangzhou, and he, uh, they were uh, sentenced to 17 years, 9 months. And Mr. Li Po, he, without going through the normal immigration procedures, he was uh, taken out of Hong Kong to the mainland to assess an investigation. What Hong Kong people fear most is whether the uh, basic law can protect the personal safety of Hong Kong people under one country, two systems. Please do not repeat, Mr. Wu. Yes, my question to the Secretary is for these two cases. According to the main reply, there is a police cooperation mechanism between Hong Kong police and mainland police authorities. I'd like to know whether the uh, mainland police authorities have sought the assistance of Hong Kong police for these two cases in the investigation. Secretary, Mr. Ponai Hayes' case received a report uh, involving illegal uh, detention and there was information that uh, the couple was in the mainland. So the police took the initiative to request assistance from the mainland police authorities. Through their assistance, were able to safely bring Mrs. Poon back to Hong Kong. And for Mr. Poon, since uh, when he was found uh, by the mainland police authorities, he was found to be involved in, in another case at the same time. So according to um, uh, national law here or mainland law, he had to be uh, uh, dealt with in that way. And so, Mr. Secretary, please uh, pause. The question was very simple. For these two cases, did the mainland police authorities ask the Hong Kong police for assistance uh, for investigation. For the first question, it's very simple. We sought their assistance on our part. And for the second case, we wrote uh, to the main authorities asking for help, and there was one reply from them. Mr. Tam Yu Chong, Mr. Wu, I am of the view that the secretary has already answered your question. You asked uh, whether the mainland uh, police authorities sought help from the Police and I am of the view that the police has clearly answered your question, Mr. Tam Yu Chong. If there are Hong Kong permanent residents in Hong Kong leaving Hong Kong illegally, uh, have they breached the law? Are they legally liable? And if they return to Hong Kong, not through the uh, legal channels. And if they don't tell you uh, in by what means, uh, have they broken the law? And do they have uh, the duty to tell you by what means? Secretary, if a person leaves Hong Kong without the usual immigration procedures, has he broken the law? We have to consider each case in its own merits. If anyone who leaves Hong Kong at our control point, um, officers of ID have statutory duty or power to uh, investigate and examine the case. If uh, the person doesn't leave Hong Kong through our uh, control point, they uh, go into our frontier closed area and then leave Hong Kong afterwards, he might have uh, breached our frontier closed area legislation because that's illegal. If he has left Hong Kong by boat, now he is required to present his personal data to the captain of the sea, who also has the duty to declare information of himself and his passengers on board uh, to the immigration authority for investigation, feeling that the captain um, commits an offense, but we have to look at the actual circumstances and then we'll know which uh, legislation applies. So the most important thing is the matter itself. For this matter, we've not come to a stage as to how it happened. So I cannot give you a simple answer, yes or no. We have to investigate the case with facts in hand. We can then further make a judgment. So I've said this a number of times. I will not uh, speculate. I will not uh, 
uh, we must investigate and then with facts and evidence we can then come to a firm conclusion. We've spent almost 25 minutes on this question. The meet, the sitting is now suspended. Please come back uh, by 1.25 p.m. Thank you.